I'd like to welcome you all to Comsai 125 Operating Systems. Okay. Uh, before we uh, proceed, may I have an uh, ano ba yung ano, uh, idea nyo pag naririnig nyo yung operating systems? Meron ba kayong idea pag naririnig nyo yung operating systems? Ano yung naiisip nyo? Anyone? Operating systems. Ay, man, nag-1-3-1 sa akin. First row. Ano idea ng operating system? Windows. Narinig nyo. Windows, Linux, and yung shorthand yung iOS. And do you have any uh, concept, uh, or the idea, ano yung ginagawa ng OS? Tingin nyo, high level idea, ang ginagawa ng OS. Anyone? Guess lang kahit, kahit anong guess, ang ginagawa ng OS. Oh, Jamie na lang, oh, Jamie. <laughs> Ano sa tingin mo ginagawa ng OS? Bibigyan ng user interface para magamit yung hardware. Okay, so nabibigyan ng user interface para magamit yung hardware. So in a way, parang ganun. Kasi if you just purchase a piece of hardware, tapos let's say you have the Microsoft Word without an operating system, hindi mo rin magagamit yung, ano, yung Microsoft Word mo which is an application to run on your hardware. So, somewhere in the middle, there should be an operating system doing that. Basically. So, yun yung aarali natin, yung middle, uh, somehow middleware na yun, which is the operating system. How it operates, how it manages the hardware, and how it provides uh, an interface to the user. Okay? So, this is the course title of uh, uh, this course, Operating Systems. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, the picture, this is a screenshot or a picture of uh, the ICS OS that we're going to use in this course. Okay, so, you're going to run this, modify this, and then write a project that runs on this operating system. So, some descriptions about uh, the course, so it's course number is COMSAI 125, uh, Operating Systems title. Uh, the description uh, is the official description from uh, the approved curriculum or course, uh, processor management, memory management, file and disk management, resource management, concurrent process, networks, and distributed systems. So, there are a lot of things that we're going to cover in this uh, course. Basically, as I said earlier, on the middle part, the middleware part. And the prerequisite is uh, COMSA 123. Did every, uh, has everyone taken 123? Completed 123? Okay, so I also would like to add COMSA 131 for this. So because uh, you need to have some understanding of uh, systems programming, assembly language, so it's good if you've taken COMSAI uh, 131 to, before you take this. So the course credit is three units. Why? Right, what's, what's the aim of this course? Uh, the aim is to introduce students to operating system concepts. Right? So that's the idea. And uh, for the objectives, uh, these are the three main objectives for uh, this course. Describe the purpose and functions of an operating system. So as Jamie mentioned a while ago, it's uh, one way to provide an interface to the user okay, to be able to use the hardware. Uh, the next one is design and implement programs to perform simple operating system tasks. Okay, so uh, in a way, the operating system provides services to applications, for example, Microsoft Word, you are able to save files from Microsoft Word because the operating system provides a 
system call that allows the application like Microsoft Word to write to the disk. So that's uh, uh, one of the things that you're, you're going to learn. How do I implement a system call? And that application programs can use this system call for their specific user-centric applications. And the last one is to evaluate the performance of different operating system algorithms. So I've, I've been teaching this course for a while already. And uh, in a way, uh, understanding or actually implementing your own operating system uh, is in a way, kumbaga, ina-apply mo lahat ng totoo mo sa computer science. So uh, data structures, simple programming, algorithm. So in developing an operating system, uh, algorithms and data structures are also used to implement the, the, the services. And of course, depending on the choice of the algorithm or the choice of the data structure, uh, that will affect the performance of the operating system. For example, uh, in terms of file systems, so in Linux you have, when you install Linux, if you've experienced installing Linux, uh, there are different options for the file system, the layout of your disk. So you have, by default, it's ext4, right? But you, can, you have an option to select either, uh, you have the option to select other file systems like uh, ZFS, BTRFS, which offer different performance for different workloads, right? And in the case of Windows, for example, you have uh, NTFS, the default uh, file system, but they differ in performance. So as much as possible, uh, the topics that we're going to discuss here are based on the ACM uh, 2013 curriculum guidelines. So what's the purpose of these curriculum guidelines? The idea is to somehow provide a uniform uh, set of topics such that students taking computer science will have somehow a common uh, set of topics that they should know okay, uh, when they finish the degree. So it's available online and I simply selected the uh, specific, uh, specific uh, topics that are associated to operating systems. So these are the things that somehow we're going to cover in this uh, course. Okay. So are there questions at this point? Yeah. Okay, so, sino dito yung first time takers ng 125? Okay. So marami na rin second takers, so it's alright. Uh, yung mga second takers, meron tayong bagong, ano na yun, sa bagong textbook na gagamitin, so it will not be the previous one. So, kasi yung mga, yung mga ganitong plus size, dito maganda bang experiment? So, last sa 131, experiment tayo sa 131. So, ngayon, ina-adapt na nila ngayon yon sa 131 na large class. Okay, so, I assisted Ma'am Riza and her team to transition from their old ways to the one I used last time. So, this one, ganun din. So again, it's more experimental, and let's see what we're going to achieve. All right, let's move on for the evaluation and grading. So we're going to have three long exams, and that will be 45% of your grade, and quizzes and homeworks, 10%. A project, 10%, which will be developing an application for, uh, or actually a system program for uh, uh, ICS OS. Uh, and laboratory part, which is 35%, which contains some um, activities that are related to systems. Uh, I haven't actually finalized yet the activities for the lab, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll, I will be removing some exercises from the previous years. I think uh, I will be removing the scheduling uh, exercises, programming the different CPU stages going to have an alternative homework for that. Okay. And for so given this uh, breakdown, the pre-final grade will be A plus B plus C plus D, total of 100%. And you're going to have a final exam, right, the usual. So again, my objective for the final exam, everyone is required to take final exam, is somehow to refresh yourself uh, about the topics, start to finish, to review, and then 
that when you exit Komsai 125, somehow you were able to go back again to the set of topics that uh, we, studied, we studied in this course in the early part of the semester, during the early part of the semester. So the final grade will be 20% uh, the final exam and 80% uh, of the E, the pre-final. Okay? So this is our scale, grading scale. So, yeah. So, other questions? Do you want to add more or you want to break down some of the part items here? Okay, so, uh, the project is interesting because it's quite, uh, it depends on how you perform, but uh, some students enjoy writing the projects, running an ICSOS. Okay, so attendance policy. Okay. Uh, although I have not been strict with attendance, as much as possible, try to attend the class. Uh, you've been uh, studying here, so why not uh, attend the class? Uh, it's alright if, if you sleep, but as long as you attend the class, uh, at least somehow you'll be able to recall some, some, some things. And uh, I will be uploading, of course, these, uh, these lectures so that uh, if you fail to uh, attend, you can still watch or uh, whatever do with the video so collaboration policy uh, on our code uh, well uh, last time I've, I've seen some people sharing code 131 okay? uh, I did not uh, I did not uh, call your attention about that but I am aware of that okay? so I don't know I mean uh, if you pass by just copying the code of your classmate I don't know, if you work in the industry, of course you can copy code from Stack Overflow, but somehow uh, uh, you need to be able to do things on your own, right? And seek the help, not just copy, right? Ask, ask me to explain how does it work, and not just you know, uh, code, right? So, yeah, that's it. Uh, we're ready to explain your code, so, uh, I think there are 15 in the in size, and I uploaded them, added you in the Google Classroom. So, lahat ba kayo nasa Google Classroom na? Sino yung wala pa sa Google Classroom? So, dapat nasa Google Classroom na kayo, ha? Ay, so, yun. So, unfortunately, ako din yung lab instructor nyo. Okay, so, it's PC Lab 9 tayo. Sana kasi tayo and I haven't actually checked the lab yet. We'll check the lab later. Uh, and then uh, probably we'll do some setup uh, installation steps. Okay? So are there questions? Okay. So if none, then we can begin the... So this... The, this uh, this course outline is uh, posted in here. Jack Harosi, the number of teaching one to five. By the way, uh, I mentioned a while ago about the textbook. Okay. So in the past, uh, I've been using this uh, operating system concepts, okay? the dinosaur book. Okay. If you've seen this or used this book, it's a good book. It's a classic. It's in the, its ninth edition, and uh, I mostly based my lectures here. A lot of universities use this, right? But uh, of course, you can obtain pirated copies of the textbook. Okay? But uh, today, uh, this semester, we're going to use this operating OS step, okay? operating systems three easy pieces. This is an open source uh, or free textbook also being adopted by uh, different universities. And uh, it's quite easy to read uh, compared to the dinosaur book. It's quite easy to read, but in my opinion, uh, it has some limited information. 
So we need, I still need to supplement it with uh, additional information from other textbooks like the Dinosaur book. So that's why I included uh, in this uh, resources link the supplementary textbooks that we're going to use. So some questions might be coming from this book, but some will be coming from this book. Okay? So that's the resources. So uh, there are a lot. So actually, you can uh, obtain the the authors of the book uh, suggest that instead of downloading the PDF files and creating a local copy, we should just link to the to the uh, actual PDF files here. So that's what I'm going to do. And of course, you can uh, you can download. You can actually uh, what I did was to use a tool to be able to merge all of these PDFs into one PDF file. But uh, for your use, I, you can use this. Right? So, we'll talk about this later. So, everything here, everything that I'm going to talk about is available from this textbook. But I will be showing you examples. I will be showing you code and probably providing some input uh, in relation to the ICS OS, right? So here uh, in this uh, in this uh, textbook, they're using an operate a, a small version of the uh, Unix re-implementation of an early version of the Unix operating system for the laboratory. But for our, in our case, we're going to use your our uh, own. ICS OS. So I've been using this uh, code. Uh, when was the last edit here? So I just edited 12 hours ago. Right? So basically uh, updated the semester. So this is a 32-bit operating system, and uh, I had I have some instructions on how to build this. Uh, we're going to walk through this. So. Uh, I'm, current, I, I'm currently using this because in order to build the operating system, it should be uh, running a 32-bit development environment. So I'm using Docker to do this. Uh, are you familiar with Docker? No? Are you familiar with VirtualBox? Yes, so there are two options. Uh, you can install a 32-bit uh, Ubuntu 16.04 uh, in VirtualBox to be able to build this, or you can use Docker. So that even though you are running in a 64-bit uh, OS, you'll be able to build this uh, in a 64-bit environment using uh, Docker. And knowing Docker somehow uh, will add some knowledge on how to use containers. So Docker is for a container, which is actually an important aspect of operating systems. So how does how do containers work? Okay. Somehow uh, we're going to touch about this uh, later. Okay. So this has been uh, a project. I haven't got the time to port this to uh, 64-bit, but maybe if you're interested for your SP, port this to 64-bit. So that, but I think it will, be, it will be difficult to do that, right? So, are there questions so far? So, as we go along, uh, we're going to learn a lot about systems development and operating systems concepts. Okay. So, if you have don't have any questions, uh, since we did not meet uh, several for several, for one week. Okay, so we've already missed one week, so we are in this topic part. So we can proceed now with our uh, lecture. Okay, so this is uh, so I hope you I, I'll be posting some reading assignments, but can proceed now with the lecture. Okay, before that. So are, are, uh, are you all familiar with GitHub? 
Yeah, yes, okay. So I hope everyone's going to be neat. Um, uh, also, I give quizzes every meeting. So make sure you come on time at the start of the meeting. Uh, So usually I give a five-point quiz and one bonus question uh, pertaining to current events, sports, music, showbiz. Okay, so we'll be using some code from this uh, repository. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, introduction to operating systems. So this slide is based on the OS Step Two. Okay. Uh, it is a different approach. Uh, it divides the operating system topics into virtualization, uh, concurrency, and persistence. So we'll start with some introduction, introductory concepts to give an overview of uh, what an operating system is and how it does its task. Okay. So, to those who have taken ComSci 131, right, or any programming course, uh, these are the things that happen when a program is run. Right? So, let's say you have a Hello World program in C, or uh, yeah, in C. Let's not discuss about Python, let's talk about C. It's a compiled uh, language. And the language or the program, the C program, when passed to the C compiler, generates an executable code or a binary ELF format. For those who have taken ComSci in Linux systems, uh, ELF format. And that executable is run by the operating system via the loader, execve, for those who have taken, those who remember. Uh, and, uh, the processor, once the operating system uh, gives uh, the processor to the CPU, right? uh, the, the, yeah, the, uh, assign the CPU to a particular program or process, right? these are the things that happen. Right? So the processor fetches an instruction from the memory. So it's a von Neumann architecture. Then you have the decode, uh, figure out which instruction it is. Then execute, for example, add two numbers, access memory, check a condition, jump to function, and so forth. Right? And then the processor moves on to the next instruction and so on. Right? Can anyone follow this? Right? So this, of course, you should know this, right? So, and uh, as mentioned a while ago by Jamie, one of the uh, we, uh, roles or responsibilities of the operating system is to make it easy to run programs. So imagine uh, during the early days, uh, if you don't have an operating system, you just have the machine. If you want to write a program, let's say that uh, compile uh, that uh, adds two numbers, you have to code them uh, from a punch card and then place that to the mainframe. Right? And then the computer or the hardware will execute those instructions. Right? But with the introduction of uh, operating system, it makes it easy to run programs. So nowadays you have a uh, graphical user interface, so point and click, you are able to double click, the program executes. Right? Or if you have a command line interface, that slash, okay? execute the program. Right? So another responsibility of the operating system is sharing memory. So in ComSci 131, you've seen this already that uh, when the program runs, right, uh, 
there are a lot of things in the memory of the computer when it is running. So the command uh, top, for example, uh, those who are not familiar with the word with the command top, the top command. So as we go along in this uh, class, I'm going to introduce some commands that are related to operating systems. Right? So if you haven't tried these commands before, uh, you go you have the opportunity to try this. Right? So example, you have the top command and the computer is uh, a program, uh, is a hardware, has a hardware with memory in it. Right? And you will see here the percent memory, which describes that these are the programs or the processes running, and this is the percentage that uh, this program or process is using in terms of the memory. And these are the uh, actual uh, sizes. So you can use the top command to view this. And you see here the general or the overall uh, amount of memory. Okay? So you have here uh, 8 gig, okay? and it also uses swap space. Okay? So the point here is uh, the operating system allows the sharing of memory among the program. So this one is a PDF viewer and you have a bumilikan ng RAM chip, isang ganun lang yan, sa slide. And all the programs are sharing that uh, memory. Okay. Uh, enabling programs to interact with devices. Okay. So the hardware, so basically the hardware of the computer has, you have the CPU, the processor, you have the memory, and you have the uh, I.O. devices. Right? So, when you save a file from, let's say, Microsoft Word, you have the, the Microsoft Word has to uh, write to the disk, which is a different device. Right? So, the operating system provides that. Without the operating system, Let's say you don't have the operating system and you save a file from Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word will have to do a lot of things before it will be able to save files to the disk. Okay. But if you have an operating somewhere in the middle, uh, it will just be a simple function call and the operating system does the rest of writing the, uh, the file to the actual disk. Right? So for example, uh, So the command free, okay, minus G for example, will allow you to view the amount of memory in the system. So this is a Linux system. And uh, DF, uh, okay, the DF command will tell you uh, the amount of this space available and free. Okay. So you see this here. Okay. So different programs will be able to use this disk right? because that's part of the uh, responsibility of the operating system. So, so the OS is in charge of making sure that the system <coughs> operates correctly and efficiently. Right? So there is the, the keywords, uh, the words correctly and efficiently are highlighted here because if you don't do this correctly, for example, uh, let's say saving files. If different programs save files simultaneously without doing uh, the saving correctly, then the disk or the contest will be corrupted, right? Do you agree? Okay. So the OS should be able to do these things correctly. Another one is efficient, efficiency. efficiency. So if it takes too long to load a web page, then uh, that is a problem. Or if it takes too long to read a file, then that is a problem because the user might get bored or impatient. Or if uh, the program is uh, critical, or the, the function of the program is critical, it might cause delays and it may even cause, let's say, death, for example. Kasi kailangan time, is, ano, uh, yung time constraint siya eh. Okay? So you have to consider that. 
So these are the responsibilities of the operating system. Okay. So essential to the uh, concept of uh, actually, iba yung definition yun ng virtualization dito. But the word virtualization uh, may come, uh, may uh, may uh, may arrive in uh, different scenarios in computer science. Okay. So dito sa context ng book na to. Uh, yung virtualization, for example, yung virtual box is called virtual box because it provides virtualization, right? But in the context of operating system, somehow the operating system takes a physical resource and transforms it into a virtual form of itself, right? Ano yung ibig sabihin yan? So you buy a hardware, you specify the processor i7, you specify the amount of RAM bumibili kayo ng motherboard, okay? may PCIe, uh, kung ano-ano bang peripherals. Okay? So, the operating system takes that uh, bare hardware, physical hardware, and creates a, uh, a layer, a virtualization layer, that somehow presents itself to uh, the users. Okay? Now, the idea here is uh, it is much easier to use more general and more powerful to use the virtual form of the physical resources. So in some literature, the OS is referred to as a virtual machine. But in my own definition of virtual machine, this is not how I view the operating system. But in this book, it use the operating system. So my hardware ka, halimbawa, uh, kaya sa sinasabi ng virtual machine, okay, uh, going back to this illustration, so we have uh, how many CPUs here? We have four, four cores, CPU 0, okay, CPU 1, CPU 2, CPU 3. How many programs are running? There are a lot of programs running. How can these programs run if you only have four processors? Ideally, if you have one processor, only one program can run on that processor because sequential siya. Eh. But how is it that the operating system is able to run all these programs when you only have given uh, you're, when you are only given four processors and Take note of the percentage usage of each processor. Usually, in a heavy loaded system, this will be 100%. Right? But in this case, in our setup, it's still uh, underutilized. Right? So the operating system actually provides uh, a, virtual, a virtual form such that uh, each process will think uh, we'll think of this processor as, uh, as a ver in, a, in a virtual form, in a virtual, as, uh, what they call it, a virtual CPU, right? But uh, which is more uh, general, okay, more powerful, okay, and uh, yeah, easy to use, right? You get the idea? Do you follow? So that's the idea of uh, virtual machine. And... Uh, the operating system also provides an API. Okay, so API, you know this already, application programming interfaces, okay, APIs. So it basically is a form of functions that you can call. Right? I mentioned a while ago about Microsoft Word saving files to the disk. Right? So you have the application Microsoft Word and you have the disk, which is a physical device. Right? In order for Microsoft Word to save, the file to the disk, it has to call an operating system service called the system call to be able to write to the disk, right? to the specific file system supported by the disk. Because you know, for example, Microsoft Word, you have a Microsoft Word sa Mac, diba? Meron Microsoft Word sa Windows, diba? And they are able to save uh, Word documents to both operating systems. How, how, does, how does it happen? Because Windows provides Microsoft Word a system call to be able to save to the disk 
in a Windows environment and Mac OS provides a system call that allows the Mac OS version of Microsoft Word to write to the disk, uh, let's say, uh, ZFS if that is being used in the file system of Mac OS or whatever uh, file system Mac OS is using. Okay? So, in COMSA 131, there was a topic about the Linux system calls, say, uh, syscall, uh, syscall number, move AS syscall number, right? So usually you have a syscall number and uh, the operating system exports uh, usually a lot of uh, system calls to run programs, access memory, access devices. So you can look up, uh, I think it's Linux system calls. A list of that. Okay. So, in the 32-bit uh, version of uh, Linux, okay, so you have uh, said by number and have this. So, of course, you have different uh, Linux and operating system supports different machines, x86, R processors, etc. So. Yeah, so you can see here the different system calls. So this is this. Uh, if you're going to develop an operating system, you need to provide an API in the form of system calls, so that applications will be able to use the services provided by the operating system to support uh, the user's needs, uh, doing things correctly and doing things efficiently. Okay, do you follow that uh, perspective? So, yeah, so access device. So, uh, in ICS OS, there's a file there that uh, exports or that exposes all the available uh, system calls, and that is used by the SDK, Software Development Kit, okay, if you've heard of that, okay. So, Java provides an API, uh, POSIX is an API. For Windows 32, you have the Win32 Win API. So those things are provide system calls. Okay, Do you follow? So okay, so yon, yun yung idea na system call. The next one is resource manager. Oh, as a resource manager. So typical uh, physical resources of a computer is the CPU, the memory, and the disk, right? And it's, by you say management, uh, these are the things that is being done by the operating system. Many programs to run, so sharing the CPU, as I mentioned a while ago, we have a lot of programs running and we only have four CPUs here. And the CPU can only execute, let's say, one instruction, unless it supports multi -thread, multiple threads, right? And uh, so, Example, uh, LSCPU command. Right? Uh, so, cut proc CPU info. Right. So, this describes uh, the different pro processors in this machine. So, this is the processor zero. Okay? So, it's an i5 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. Uh, is there a number of threads here? So, wala naman sinasabing number of threads dito. Wala naman threads dito. So, you can see that here. And given these four processors, the operating systems, so this is a 64-bit system, 64-bit okay? processor, okay? it's the role of the operating system, in this case, Linux, to multiplex or uh, allow the different programs to share the CPU. And uh, many programs, uh, it also allows many programs to concurrently access their own instructions and data. So it also allows uh, memory sharing. Okay? Uh, later, when we talk about inter-process communication, okay, we have two programs. Normally, the operating system provides some form of isolation. Na itong program na to dapat hindi niya makita yung ginagawa nitong program na to. Pero, yung operating system, meron siyang way na kung saan yung dalawang program ay pwede mong pag-usapin by uh, inter-process communication in the form of shared memory. Yung sharing. So, ganun yung 
concept. For example, sa ICSOS, wala siyang, wala siyang shared memory. So, pwede niyong gawing project, mag-implement kayo ng shared memory para sa ICSOS. This one thing. Uh, many programs to access uh, devices. So, sharing this. Right? So, sharing this would mean, uh, yeah, uh, pag tinignan mo itong ano, pag tinignan mo yung file system, So you see here the ito lang yung main uh, dev uh, dev SDA. So this is the disk. So you see here that it is a disk with uh, about 500 uh, gig or 450 gig uh, size, and the different programs Firefox, Chrome, PDF viewer, file manager. They all share this disk, and you only have uh, one root partition here. We we'll talk about IoT, but persistence later. You have here uh, the disk. Right? So, it uh, the operating system allows different processes to share the disk in the form of folders. So, for example, in the Linux system, right? if you have configuration files. So in the Linux system, you have here dot files. So these dot files represent the different configuration for different programs. So they share the whole directory. Right? So it allows the sharing of these resources. Right? We follow. So it's also one of the tasks of the operating system. So are there questions? So I think we'll stop here. We have questions. So feel free to ask questions. Uh, for today's attendance, uh, just get uh, one one for sheet of paper. Write your question based on the lecture. Uh, every day, uh, every meeting, may quiz ako, so expect that. So if you find anything that is. Uh, Confusing, write them down. <laughs> write down and uh, I'll try to answer that. That will be our attendance for today. Seventeen kayo, fifteen lang yung nandun sa sais ng nilipong silip. Sino yung dalawa na bago lang dito na papasa? Pre road? Pre road ka din? Okay, so. Wala rin yung conflict sa schedule. Okay, so... Yan, so, umula na kayo. Write your name, student number. Wala rin lab section sa sila na mga kayo. Day to day. And we'll continue next meeting this topic. So, I hope you read the book. Easy reading lang siya. Uh, I find it parang boring na sa akin, pero I don't know, baka sa perspective nyo mas okay, mas enjoy. Kumpara dun sa book sa 131 last sem, okay? mas uh, hindi siya masyadong technical, but it's, uh, it's a good read. So, kung tapos na kayo sa quiz, you can pass your paper and then you can